Praise the Lord, everybody. This is Prophetess Equila. Welcome back to this week's episode of my new series, Deliverance is Still Relevant. Um, on today's episode, I really want to focus in um, on who um, your enemy really is. Um, I'm doing this to make sure um, that you are clear. You know, um, this is the third week. This is the third session. If you're just joining me, please go on out there and watch um, episodes one and two of this new series. This is an, an equipping series um, for those that are called to ministry and just for believers in general who want to understand on the subject of deliverance and spiritual warfare. So I really want to make it clear that for Christians, um, our warfare is not against other people. It's not against um, flesh and blood. Okay, so who is the enemy? Let's look at 1 Peter 5, 8 through 9. And yes, I jump right in. So write the scriptures down, go back over the scriptures. The videos will be posted on the YouTube channel. And I'm also led to um, post these series of teaching on my website, okay? So you'll be able to write the scriptures down and go back over. But 1 Peter 5, 8 through 9, I'm going to give this to you from the King James Version. It says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. And verse 9 says, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accompanied in your brethren that are in the world. So the word of God is clear. Who is your adversary according to the scripture? Your adversary is the devil, okay? It's not other people. And what is your adversary doing? Again, the scripture is clear. He's walking about seeking whom he may devour. Now, John 10.10 10, I like to refer to this as this is the devil's threefold agenda. It reads, the thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. All right. So when we look at the scripture, we see that we have an adversary, a spiritual advers adversary. All right. The, the devil and his crew. Okay, um, other evil and unclean spirits, not people. All right, and that's the point I want to really um, make sure that you are understanding. Now, if we look again at James 4 and 7, it says a part of, um, I want to make clear to you that a part of spiritual warfare is resisting. Okay, resisting the devil. So this is James 4, 7. It says, submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil, your adversary, <laughs> and he will flee from you. All right? When you resist, you have to resist the assaults of the enemy. Now, uh, he might be assaulting your mind with doubt, unbelief, fear, worry, oppression, depression, rejection, okay? He might be attacking um, your physical body with pain, um, sickness, disease, infirmity, and you have to resist him. Hallelujah, you have to resist him with faith, believing what the word of God says, okay? So this is a part of spiritual warfare. Remember, this series, Deliverance is Still Relevant, 
we are talking about deliverance and spiritual warfare. All right. So hallelujah. Now, James, I want to give you James four and seven. I want to give it to you from the amplified. One of the things that um, if you follow my teaching, whether it's on the radio or whether it's on the, my um, YouTube channel, you know that I always encourage you to look at different translations of the scriptures so that you can make sure that you are getting a real clear understanding of what God is saying. You allow, allow the Holy Spirit to bring forth more revelation and understanding by studying the different translations. So in James 4, 7, the Amplified, it says, so submit to the authority of God, resist the devil, stand firm against him, and he will flee from you. The contemporary English version says, surrender to God, resist the devil, and he will run from you. Okay, so a part of spiritual warfare is resisting the attacks, the assaults on your mind, on your body, on your, on your um, finances, on your family. OK, by staying in faith, believing what the word of God says. OK, and speaking what the word of God says, that's a part of fighting the good fight of faith. All right. Hallelujah. Now, let me give you that scripture. Uh, we are to fight the good fight of faith. And that's found in First Timothy six and 12. It says, fight the good fight of faith. The Amplify says, and I, and I like this, it says, fight the good fight of faith in the conflict with evil. Okay? So again, for the Christian, your adversary is not people, is not flesh and blood, is the devil and his cohorts, the devil and other um, demonic spirits, all right? Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. So I just want to make that clear um, in this segment, okay? It's really important that we understand um, we're not coming against people. Um, we're not telling anybody to come against people when we are talking about spiritual warfare. All right. Praise the name of Jesus. Now let's go. I want to go to Ephesians 6, 12, and hopefully I'm keeping this, <laughs> this camera where you can see my face on today. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Uh, Ephesians 6, 12 says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness um, of this world, okay, against spiritual wickedness in high places, okay? So again, that's so that you understand that the conflicts that we are talking about, um, the spiritual warfare that we are talking about is not against flesh and blood, all right? So let's look at 2 Corinthians. I'm going to give you 2 Corinthians 3. Excuse me. I'm going to give you 2 Corinthians 10. And I'm going to give you, we'll start with verses 3 through 4 in the King James Version. Now it says, for though we walk in the flesh, all right, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, okay? Demonic strongholds, okay? Evil strongholds, all right? Um, the Amplified says, for though we walk in the flesh as mortal men, 
We are not carrying on our spiritual warfare according to the flesh and using the weapons of man. The, the weapons um, are not of this world. Okay, so praise God. That makes it clear. And let me just give you one more translation. I'm going to give you the common English translation. And it says, although we live in the world, we do not fight our battles with human methods. Our weapons that we fight with aren't human, but instead they are powered by God. Okay, so we're talking about spiritual warfare. We're talking about a spiritual enemy, spiritual enemies, and we're talking about using spiritual weapons. The Christian does not use natural weapons. The Christian does not fight in the flesh, no fist fights, <laughs> no gun fights, no knife fights, okay? That's not what we're talking about, all right? We're talking about warring in the spirit. We're talking about praying, praying in tongues. We're talking about praying and decreeing the word. We're talking about binding um, demonic spirits and principalities and powers. And we're talking about loosing, okay? The peace and the power of God, the promises of God, okay? That's what we're talking about, amen? So um, let me check my time, okay? We still got some more time. I want to, let's go ahead and go on back over to Ephesians 6, and let's look at, I want to give you, this is a very, for some, it's a very common passage of scripture. Since we're teaching on deliverance and spiritual warfare, we cannot leave out Ephesians 10 through 18. This is talking about putting on your full armor. You got to be dressed for the battle. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. So um, this is Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. This is the King James Version. And it says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Verse 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness, verse 15, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation, which is the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Okay. So this is hallelujah. You're the full armor of God. And if you are going to be um, actively engaging in spiritual warfare, which if you're a Christian at some point, you, you will, you have to um, make sure that you are aware of your armor and that you put your armor on. Okay. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I just give God the glory. Hallelujah. I give God the honor. Now, if we look a little closer, I want to look a little closer when it talks about the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. You know, we have to study Hallelujah. We have to read the word. We have to meditate the word. We have to confess the word. We have to get the word planted deep in our hearts, in our spirits, so that when an attack comes, okay, because the devil doesn't play fair, okay, most attacks are sneak attacks, okay? Hallelujah. But if you have the word of God down on the inside of you, hallelujah, the Holy Spirit will pull that word up out of you. Hallelujah. And as you pray, the word and as you decree the word hallelujah you are using the sword of the spirit hallelujah praise the lord you're resisting the devil with the word of god and remember he'll flee 
he'll run hallelujah i gave you the scriptures that say that in james 4 7 okay but i also wanted to give you hebrews 4 12 which says for the word of god is quick and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword piercing even to the, the spiritual weapon hallelujah and it cuts it it cuts it's sharper than a two-edged sword so when you're in spiritual warfare hallelujah and you are speaking the word of god hallelujah the word is taken it's taking out the demonic forces it's cutting it's cutting it's slicing hallelujah it's dividing okay so praise the name of jesus don't take your study time lightly get into the word get the word down on the inside hallelujah and then i also hallelujah wanted to um point out and let's look at before i leave this passage i want to look at ephesians 6 okay ephesians 6 18 where it says praying with all prayer and supplication in the spirit hallelujah you got to pray hallelujah and pray with all different types of prayer okay there's more than one type of prayer okay there is prayer decrees there is prophetic intercession. There is warfare prayer. There is warfare tongues. Hallelujah. The, because once you are filled with the Holy Ghost and you begin to allow the Holy Spirit to pray through you for you. Okay. Sometimes in spiritual warfare, you don't know what you're coming up against. Okay. But if you will stop and begin to pray in the spirit and allow the spirit to make intercession, allow the Holy Ghost to just come up out of you, then you allow the Holy Spirit to pray through you for you. The Holy Spirit is making intercession and he knows the perfect, he knows the perfect the will of God to pray in that moment because again he is a divine part of the trinity all knowing spirit amen praise the name of Jesus i get a little excited hallelujah when i start sharing these scriptures and um i wanted to just give you one last scripture i'm watching my time hallelujah and i wanted to give you um romans 8 26 through 27 it says likewise the spirit also helpeth our infirmities for we know not what we should pray for as we ought but the spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings okay hallelujah groanings and utterances that cannot even be understood okay hallelujah praise the name of jesus and verse 27 says and he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the spirit because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of god so the holy spirit knows what to pray okay in any situation including um demonic attack okay including spiritual warfare and sometimes as an intercessor i can tell you uh when you're in spiritual warfare you'll hear a, a, a new tongue will come up out of you and it's a warfare tongue hallelujah you just allow the holy spirit to do what the spirit is going to do amen so that's a good place to end this session in upcoming sessions we're going to go deeper into what um other spiritual uh, weaponry that we have i gave you prayer on today hallelujah and so Praise the name of Jesus. I, before I come off of here, I just want to encourage you to like um, the pages. If you're being blessed, follow on Facebook, follow on YouTube, like and share the video so other people can get the teachings. Remember, this teaching is about equipping you um, for deliverance and spiritual warfare. You have to know how to minister deliverance to for yourself and minister deliverance to others as well as spiritual warfare. You'll be praying for yourself and you'll be praying for others. Okay. So um, I'm on Instagram at Miller Equilla. Hallelujah. Like the page, follow the page. You can get to my website um, from Instagram, from Facebook, 
and um, I invite you to go on on my website, take a tour. I have an online bookstore. I do an online prophetic mentoring program. I do prophetic counseling um, via phone and video chat. Okay, and so um, I have many eBooks. Uh, one of the eBooks that I recommend for you to get as supplement to this teaching is Who You Are in Christ. If you don't know, you need to know. Hallelujah. And it's a very thorough teaching. And so I'll just encourage you to continue to plug in and I'll be back next time um, on another episode of Deliverance is Still Relevant. I'm equipping you. All right. This is Prophetess Equilla. This is um, Equipping Kingdom Leaders TV with Prophetess Equilla. God bless.